<laughs> Masha, nice to meet you, my brother. Look, Akhi, you have different issue between asking questions and between whisper of a shaitan. Because remember, shaitan isn't going to leave you or leave me alone. You understand? So if you have questions, we are here to answer it according to our knowledge, according to our abilities, yes? But also there are certain questions should not be asked, not because there's no answer for it, because the question itself is sophistry. You know, it's sophistry? For example, let me give you an example. That, that is stupid. Or, 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 or if God's able to do it, like the Christian argument, if God's able to do everything, can he become a man? That's, that's sophistry. Do you know why? No, no, I'm not saying like that. Because if, you, if God becomes a man, man is limited. But God has a limited power. So that's, that's a paradox. Doesn't make any sense. But if you have any questions, then also there's a question that some Muslims have. It's based upon liberalism or secularism or atheism uh, foundation. Understand? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so he's been heavily influenced by liberalism, or atheism, or uh, secularism, and he he thinks Islam opposes sound reasoning. But Islam doesn't oppose sound reasoning. Islam opposes the opinion that he's been influenced by. Mm -hmm. Do you understand my point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, if we agree with that, so what is the questions you have? Like, for example, for example, I know you probably heard it a million times. And he's gonna so this time it's gonna be one million, million and one. Because no one. It's given me the proper answer. You know what I mean? My question is: If God is all knowing, omnipotent, and He knows everything that's going to happen, that's yeah, happen, everything. yeah, and we have free will, yeah. Why, why is people like Hitler and Stalin born into this world? And the response I get with that, yeah, I say is. Everybody's got their own choice and their own decisions and Hitler and Stalin decided with their own free will that Allah gave them, yeah. they decided to do that. But my counter to that would be, didn't Allah know what decisions he was going to make before he even thought about making it? Yeah, we don't say thought, because thought when you don't know. Firstly, see, that, that, that's one of the questions, you know that is a sort of street question. You don't, you think it's not? It's not, it's not. do you know why? Because you want to dictate to Allah what he should do. Yes, I'll give you an example of that. Is it logical and rational for someone who has a little knowledge to judge someone who has a perfect knowledge? Of course not. That's, okay. why, that's why I'm not fully... That's, that's, my, that's my point. No, my point here, uh, that, similar to uh, to, uh, I mentioned about sovereignty questions, mm -hmm. sometimes you think it's illogical, but it's not in reality. Okay, example of that, because now Allah only taught us, because be, the question will be valid, why Allah create Hitler in, in, in paradise? If it doesn't keep people in paradise, because paradise is not a place for a test, okay? That would be a logical argument. Why Hitler is in paradise killing people when paradise should be no killing, no nothing? But in this life, Allah only tells us to test us through our life, through our wealth, through our children. So it, it makes sense, you understand? So, so you see, your, your question is based upon the wrong pre premises. Because your premises, you think in this life should be perfect. But that's not the life that Allah told us to be perfect. The love that should be perfect is paradise. When I say perfect, mean there's no killing, there's no this, understand? So that's my point. My point is many Muslims, when they ask questions, and that's how I said, I said, ask, no problem. When, sometimes we have a doubt because, so why doubt called doubt? It defies logic, you're basically saying. Some, some principles defies. It's, it's, like, it's, it's bigger and, than logic, is what you're saying. It's and it's and guess sound reasoning. Okay. You understand? Because, for example, I said to you, for example, and now, if a daughter, she said to her, uh, 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 her father, oh, forget that, the story in the Quran, the story in the Quran, the story in the Quran of Musa and Khadr, do you know about it? Musa, yeah, I know Musa. Uh, 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 Al-Khadr is in Surah Al-Kahf. This story, he explains everything for us. Every doubt about Allah's Qadr, about evil, explains it. Let us see how, okay? So, Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, once he was asked by his followers, Israelites, Man a'lamu nas as we mentioned Bukhari. Oh Musa, who is the most knowledgeable person? According to Musa, he's a prophet of Allah, therefore he's the most knowledgeable person. He said, I. So he said to him, then, what do they call it? He said to him, Allah told him, rebuked him. When I say rebuked him, by the way, it's not like a, uh, corrected him, all right? Uh, he said, don't say that. You should say the knowledge of this particular question is with Allah. Allah said to Musa, I'm going to send you to someone who has more knowledge than you. Okay, Al Khadr, he has a knowledge of what? The ulama mentioned, or I will let you know after. So now Musa met Al Khadr. Al Khadr said to Musa, alayhi salam, 
Don't travel with me because you're going to see certain things is going to disturb you. And I'm sure you're not going to be able to withhold yourself. Musa said, I will. So they're walking together. They had to cross a river. They were young boys, poor. They had this boat, they were utilizing it to work, to make money from it, to help people to cross from one side to the other side. They knew Khidr, he was a righteous man, so they allowed him to uh, boat for free, okay, to jump on the boat, the boat for free. When, he, when, he, when they dropped them off, Al Khidr scratched the boat. Musa said, that's my, you see, Musa said, what are you doing? These young boys, they just helped us, you scratch their boat. You and I, and all of us here, if we saw Khidr doing that, we will call Al Khidr, what is it? Evil man. Yeah. Look, people did favor to you, took care of you, and he scratched their boat. Khidr said to him, I told you, you're not going to be patient with me. He said, carry on. He said, I'm not going to ask. Carry on. Second time they're walking, they saw a young boy. Al Khidr went and killed him. He said, how dare you? You're killing a young boy. He, he committed no sin. Why are you killing him? That way, step by, see, now if all of us stand in here and we'll see Al-Khadr's action, all of us, we're going to misjudge Al-Khadr's action. Why? Because Al-Khadr, Allah gave him Ilmul Ilal. What is Ilmul Ilal? The knowledge of the outcome. We know the knowledge of, because there's a suite of knowledge, there's a hidden knowledge, and there's a knowledge which is Dahir, manifested knowledge. Allah possesses both of them, all right? So, Al-Khadr, Allah gave him some of the hidden knowledge of certain actions what will lead to. Yes, so and now the third time they're walking together, they went to a village, they asked the people, welcome us, host us. They said, no, we're not going to host you. So there was a wall, it's about to collapse. al Khadr go to fix it. Musa said, your story is very strange. Yours, you're a very strange person. Those who helped us, you scratch their boat. Those who reject to help us, you go help them. He said, today's enough. He said, as for the first one, the boys, they had a king in their village and they used to take away any boat that is in a good condition. So I scratched it in order for the people to not take it away from them. So was it, is it evil or good now? In hindsight, good. It's good now. Yeah. Because what? It saved him from the evil leader. Because the king, if, if he left the, the boat the way it is, the king was going to take it away from them. Yeah. And there will be what? No money for them. So that scratch from us, it looks like an evil thing. But in the reality, that was good. You see? Can you apply that with, with everything? Of course, when it comes to Allah's action, then which one is more rational, more logical? If Musa, if Musa misjudged the action of Al Khadr, who is another human being like him, what about the action of Allah, which behind the perfect knowledge, perfect wisdom? So you're basically saying we can't comprehend yes. anything. No, certain things we can't comprehend because there is there are hidden there's a hidden knowledge behind it. Yes, there's a hidden reasons also. There's, that's what Ibn al-Qayyim, one of the Muslim scholars, Ibn Taymiyyah said. He said, Islam never came to oppose sound reasoning. But it came to blow, uh, blow away the sound reasoning. For example, like me, I don't know how the traffic light works. If you explain it to me, I think, oh my God, you understand? It's unbelievable. But it doesn't mean because I don't know how it works, therefore it's some nonsense. You understand, Akhi? So that's my point. My so point, yes, my point, you, you have to have a foundation. When you have this a foundation, you can deal with every doubt, inshallah ta'ala. So when it comes to Allah subhanahu ta'ala, it's irrational or logical, Im impossible for me or you to judge Allah's action. Because, for example, I met someone, he said to me, I said to him, why don't you believe in Allah? He said, how can I believe in Allah? My, my, when I was young, my mother passed away. So therefore, according to this person, Allah should not take his mother away. Otherwise, it's not Allah. Okay, I met another person, or a girl, so she said to me, I'm not going to believe in Allah because when I was young, I was sexually abused. So according to her, Allah does not exist because... So now what they want, they want God according to their ways. It's like take away. I want God, but he can only do this. That's illogical because God is the master, is the rabbi, is the sovereign, has a sovereign. You understand, brother? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Alhamdulillah. Think, I think a lot of people have that. You're welcome, auntie. From your country, what country from? Hayal al Bahrain. Barakallah Piko. Whatever the information you are giving is so perfect. Alhamdulillah, from Allah. MashaAllah, Hajjah, Barakallah Piko. As a Muslim girl, I learn a lot. Alhamdulillah, Khati, Barakallah Piko. Jazakallah Khair, Khati, Barakallah Piko. Alhamdulillah, I accept it.
Yeah, so may Allah give us sincerity and may Allah forgive us, brother. You know, sometimes people judge you, but they don't know what you do. So we say, Alhamdulillah, Allah hide our sins. May Allah forgive us. You know, I'll make it clear, I'm not the best person to follow. I have my shortcomings. Because you know, people sometimes, they raise someone too high. You understand, I'm a human being. The person that we follow is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions and al -Bayt. Yes, okay, so that's why... Evolution? evolution, nah, it doesn't make any sense. Evolution is not scientifically proven. I could say like it. You don't think it's scientific? No, it's not, it's not. You know, there, is, there, there was a documentary was done by um, a Jewish uh, a journalist. He's famous in America. You should watch it. He called expelled ones. The expelled ones. Yeah, the expelled ones, yeah? So he goes to universities, top universities in America. And there were scientists in, in that country. Some of them Christian, without religion. They were banned because they start doubting Darwinian evolution. You should watch it. Yeah, it's nearly two hours. I watched it. It's unbelievable. Yes. That's, that's his point. His point. No, hang on. This country, America. Brother, by the way, there's no freedom of speech. Every country, they will restrict freedom of speech. You understand? Yeah. You understand? This is this one of the, one of the, 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 the emotional, I, I will call it this emotional tickling to the people about freedom of speech. There's no freedom of speech. You see, every country will restrict it to freedom of speech. That's, in Algeria, there's certain things you can say, you cannot say in Britain. You'll be banned, you'll be uh, put in prison. There are certain things you can say in Britain, you cannot say in Algeria. You see, so this Hurriyat uh, Tabir, there's no Hurriyat Tabir. Every country has restriction. It's like, you know, there's a Canadian woman, side point. There is recently a brother, a young boy, didn't go to school because it was a day for celebrating LGBTQ. And the, the teacher, she rebuked him. She said, what about freedom of speech? So I was thinking, but hang on, what about his freedom of speech? He doesn't want to come, what are you forcing him? Ah, you see, so this freedom of speech, they, they use it when they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, that's why there's no freedom of speech. It's one of the big lies that, that we should say, we have restricted freedom of expression. It's an illusion. It's illusion. Barakallah, if you may bless you, my brother. It's illusion. It's illusion. And it's the way of shaitan. Shaitan, brother, when he wanted to misguide Adam, what did he say to Adam? He said to him, shall I not show you a tree of eternity? That tree, it was a tree of, a forbidden tree. But Iblis, he knows that if I say to Adam, it's a tree of forbidden, Adam will stay away from it. So what Iblis did, he changed the name for it. And that's what's happening now. They changed the names of certain things. Like alcohol, they say, spiritual drink. Really? Yeah, they call it Sharab uh, uh, al-Ruhani. Uh, yes, they call it spiritual drink. Yeah, yeah, they call it spiritual drink. You see, so my point here is, my brother, this, again, this came from Iblis. Yeah, so, so uh, the, the, the point here is that about freedom of speech anyway. But uh, do you have other question? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. If someone asks you why Islam is the truth? What is what? Why Islam is the truth? Why? Well, I'm still questioning it, of course. But the reason why I believe I'm more likely to believe in Islam rather than in uh, Kush, yeah, yeah. because of the belief of um, one God rather than. Mashallah, that, that's a good point. That's a good one. And I think some the one that's of Allah. I think the way of living, like when I see Muslims that practice, they're so happy and content with their life. Yeah. And that's the ultimate happiness. It's not about drinking or doing drugs. I think. Practicing Muslims, or practicing religion, makes you in happy in some way. But the true happiness, they say, the Muslim community, they have very low uh, suicide than any other religion. They do, yeah. But yeah. it's not just They're about that. Of the consequences of, of the afterlife. No, but Christianity have it as well. Christianity, you're not allowed to kill yourself. Judaism as well. You understand? But it's not about just that. Why Islam is the truth? Because when you look how Allah created mankind, when Allah created us, he created us with the tools, sound reasoning and natural inclination, yes? And when you analyze any religion, the only religion or way of life that go in line with our sound reasoning and our tools is Islam. Like the oneness of Allah is so clear in Islam. You see, when you come to Christianity, it's confusing. Hinduism, Buddhism likewise, Judaism likewise, you understand? Likewise as well, Islam it has tangible proofs that we can share. Like when it comes to the Quran, I was speaking to the Christian Arab. You were here when I was speaking to the Christian Arab. No, I wasn't. 
Okay. Uh, okay. I was asking him, who is a Christian Arab, I said, I'm going to challenge you. Can you tell me where anyone in the history, throughout the history, someone speaks like this? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Oh, noon, wal qalami, wa ma yasturoon. Oh, Alhamdulillah, ladhi anza. Himself is so beautiful. It is, it is beautiful. The question you ask yourself, how in the history, and, and Allah challenged you to bring something like it, yeah? Why this man came with this speech? It's so beautiful. And it's challenging people to come with it because that speech is not from him. And you know what scholars mentioned? One of the powerful arguments or refutation against those who try to say that the Quran was made by Prophet Muhammad, one of the strongest arguments, that if you look at the Prophet Muhammad's speech in the Sunnah, it's completely different than the Quranic style. Is it? Of course. Prophet Muhammad doesn't speak, noon, wal qalami, wa ma yasturun. When Prophet Muhammad saw him speak in his Sunnah, yes, you can see it's completely different. Because the eloquence of that speech is from Allah. Of course, Prophet Muhammad is eloquent, but the eloquence of Allah is completely different. It's a miracle. That's why, you know, even the Arab Christians now who try to accept the, uh, their challenge, wallahi, the, the, the children that go to school, second or primary school, they will laugh at them for the mistakes they make in grammar. <laughs> Just in grammar. And you know something what they do? They take some verse from the Quran and mix it. That's stealing, you understand? That's uh, so also... One of the prophecies in the Quran that Allah mentioned that Allah will make Islam spread. Yes? And it, w w there's something Allah mentioned. But look what Allah said. Even if a disbelievers dislike it. I mean, even if they try their best to stop it, they cannot stop it. From the, from the world point of view or material point of view, the, the Islamic enemies, they have more uh, uh, material than us. They have, they're more powerful in terms of resources, yes, um, social media than us. So they have more power to stop Islam spreading. But Islam is spreading around the world. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, he said, this religion will enter people's houses. Okay? And you know what? I was watching the commentary. This lady from a countryside in Leeds. So she went to university in Leeds. Then she spoke to her family and she became Muslim. Yeah, and her family thinking, when, when, when she came to see them, she was wearing hijab, the whole village, no one is Muslim. Just her. And it's everywhere. Even though there is a huge war against Islam. Brother, you know, you know, you know if this war, the war that has been waged against Islam, if it was waged against any religion, it would be dead. Any religion. It brings morality. From the, from the history, if there was no religion, people would be savages. I believe because no, religion... So, but sorry, brother, if you miss, uh, why there's no huge war against Christianity on social media? No a huge war. We're not talking war, no actual war. War. Yeah. I'm talking about like a uh, uh, intellectual war or so. Is, no, not like Islam. Okay, in, in, in Australia, every day there's many articles speaking bad about Islam. In uh, Germany, likewise. I agree. I agree. In France, likewise. I agree. In Britain, likewise. I agree. Brother, I agree. No Christianity, no Judaism. It's Islam. My family is Muslim, so I, mm. I know. That, that Muslims, when they stereotype Muslims and stay all this extreme stuff, it's all bullshit. It's all, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all lies, yeah. But I think it's annoying when I try to ask a question and the response I get is, don't, don't ask too many questions. It's not good to ask too many questions. Anymore. So you say again? I'm saying when people respond to my questions yeah. with, don't ask too many questions, it's not good to ask too many No, you're good. It's like, ask questions. It's like, That's how you learn. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to... To learn. I'm trying to learn. Yeah, no problem, Bavar. Yeah, ask, I, ask. I, I, as a kid, I went to mosque. Yeah. I learned the Quran. I know how to. Learn. I forgot it now. Yeah, of course, of course. I've been through that. Yeah, that process. that process. And if I've got questions in my mind, mm. and I'm watching your videos, for example, yeah. trying to get back to the routine. Mala bless you, man. Then yeah. it's like, and people are looking at me like you're confused. You know, no, brother. No, all of us ask. ask. Questions. No. It's like countering. No, no, brother. You are a good person, Ishad. Do you know why? Because you are fighting against shaitan. Some people know what they do. They don't want to ask no questions. They end up what? Becoming disbelievers. And you, and you know what? One of my friends, I said to him, why, I said to him, why are you Muslim? He said to me, because my mom is Muslim. I said, do you not think, is that your only reason? He said, yeah, I don't know. And that I think is wrong. You know, people that blindly follow it, yeah. I think that's wrong as well. You can't. Because there's something better to understand it and follow it. It's more 
rewarding. Like you know the Quran, you know the Islam said that Islam uh, Islam said Fa'alam, acknowledge, yeah. have knowledge. Islam is based upon knowledge, you know? Islam warns and guests just following our forefathers. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Because now if, if if a Muslim says I'm a Muslim because my mother's Muslim, the Christian said because his mother, yeah. so how do we know the truth? No. no. Allah never said be Muslim because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when when Allah uh, when Allah mentioned the intellectual proofs, the tangible proofs, the observable proofs, and why Islam is the truth, it's so powerful, brother. Like, you know, the prophecies that I'm talking about. Like, I'm telling you, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, nowadays there's a huge war as well. There's a war against human nature. Now, yeah, with this, all of this nonsense, yeah? There's a huge war against human nature. And the only religion that is standing firm and against it and not backing down is Islam. That's why there is a Christian Orientalist said, he said the reason there is a huge war against Islam, he was from this, he was a Palestinian Christian and he's in America, he died I believe. His name is Sa'id something. He said because the only religion that is not backing down for this uh, 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 immorality that is being pushed around the world is Islam. You understand? That's why the Muslim will not back. You, can, you say a Muslim, you see Muslims smoke drugs, drink alcohol, but he will not back down for Islam, alhamdulillah. You understand? Yeah, we well, not because what Islam is within us, alhamdulillah. You understand? Also, there is another prophecy Prophet Muhammad mentioned. Prophet Muhammad said there will come a time when a woman will not be sufficed with a man. When a woman will not be sufficed with a man, she will go with another woman. And there will come a time when a man will not be sufficed with a woman, he goes to another man. That's what's happening now. In the Quran, Allah mentioned that Satan will inspire people to change Allah, to change Allah's creation. One of the scholars, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Nasser Saadi, he died, he said one of the ways to change Allah's creation, even uh, like what's happening with this transgender and all of that. How Prophet Muhammad knew that? Yeah, that was not known at that time. That's a good point. Yes. I thought about that a lot as well because Brava. in the Quran it says there's going to be a time where men are going to try to be like women and women. Like yeah, there's a hadith. There's a hadith. I don't know if it's the Quran or not. No, no, hadith. Prophet said that, yeah. The Prophet said that. No doubt, brother. No doubt. You know, that's why, you know, when you look at Islam, when, Islam, when, you, when you analyze Islamic legislation, Whatever Allah told us to stay away from, because it's bad for us. Or there is more harm than good. And whatever Allah told us to do, because it's good for us. And there are some people out there who are benefiting from these evil vices, like alcohol, gambling, interest, and they look at Islam as a threat for their business. That's why they wage a war against Islam. You know, Islam teaches you, you know what is, do you know what is the meaning of freedom? When you are a slave of Allah. As Ibn Qayyim said, said min lahu, They flee from the servitude which they have been created to worship Allah. They become slaves of their desires and the shaitan. But I still disagree with, you know, in some African countries where yeah. the LGBTQ community is just killed. I think killing is ultimately wrong. No, no. Whether the person's decision is right or wrong, and in the afterlife or I think killing them on the spot and trialing them killing them because No, Islamically it's we don't no Islamically you don't kill someone he said because he said he's gay. Okay. No. Yeah, if you okay. see the action yes Islam, in Islam there's a pan, pan, capital punishment. For a man or for, it's not just because of gay. In Islam if a man and another man have intercourse and there's four witnesses, then Islamically there's a death penalty. Really? Yeah. Likewise for a man who is married and a woman who is married, if they commit fornication or adultery, there's a death penalty for them. Why? Because... But isn't there going to be God's punishment afterwards? Like, who are you No, 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 it, no that's the point. No, that's, that's the point. If they, if they get the punishment here, yeah. that's expiation for their sins. So they'll not be punished in the year after. Because they got murdered? They're, they're not just murdered. For example, they got the punishment. For example, now, if I drink alcohol, yes, the punishment is lashes, yeah? So if I got the lashes and I make terror from it... That's cruel, though. Huh? That's cruel. But this is the, the, the sins. You see, that's the point here. It's cool. This again? It's cool. Well, okay, who should determine what is right or is wrong? I don't think it should be humans against other humans. No, no, I'm saying who should determine what is right or is wrong? Logically speaking, who should? The court. Okay, the court. So the court's from God. The court is said. Even the court doesn't, doesn't mean always they're right. They say something right. That's why they have 12. No, but universally, universally. Who, Who should determine? determine? The Creator, God. It's a logical argument. If, if, if I create, if God, God is the creator of everything, 
So who has a perfect knowledge of what is good for us in details and what is bad for us in details? Who has it? If you're religious, yeah, you're God. God no, 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 Puga are religious. If you, if you accept there's a creator, you know there's God, you understand? So logic dictates, he, he knows what is good for us in details and what is bad for us in details. You see what's happening now? You're looking at this punishment, but you don't understand what is the outcome of their sins. The outcome of the sins, it causes destruction in society. You understand? So sometimes there is a harm, no doubt it's a harm, but this harm is removing greater harm. And this is deterrent. Yes? Because to be honest, even Utaimiya mentioned, throughout the history, you can count how many times the capital punishment against adultery was established. Because the conditions very hard, you understand? So someone who has been caught, he has to be openly, you understand? And you understand my point? So that's my point, Baba. So earlier on, what I said to you? Can you remember what I said to you earlier on? You can't understand some things. No, before that. I don't mind you. I said to you, sometimes you have a doubt because we look at, we've been influenced by liberalism or secularism or atheism and then we look at Islamic legislation and we say, I'm opposing it. So you as a person brought up in this country, no doubt you're going to think it is very harsh. And it is harsh. Baba, it's a punishment. Have you heard punishment soft? That's why it's called punishment. Okay, you understand? Know, you understand my point? You know hell. Yeah. Eternal hell. Yes. That's the most like, cruelest punishment. Dying, real, dying. That's why, alhamdulillah. So, so, infinitely. You know, you know, sorry to cut you. So, you, you, you are shaping my point now. So, those gays or those adulterers, they got punishment, coming punishment. They think, alhamdulillah, it's from God. I'm very happy. It's better than being a hellfire. If my, if my wife, Good. I don't have a wife. If my wife okay. cheated on me, the adultery, I'd be so pissed off. I'd be so devastated. Unbelievable. I fucking, I would hate that Don't swear, don't swear, so Sorry. I would hate that so much. Yeah. But if you said to me, would you want her to burn, resurrect, burn, resurrect, burn, resurrect, unlimited amount of time. And that's not about adultery. It's for disbelievers. It's for disbelievers. It's a bit too cruel. No, but again, but you, you know, you're okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. That my point here is, again, this argument is not rational. You yeah, know why? I'm an emotional person. Yeah, of course, but okay. Is, is emotional argument always valid or can be, can be wrong? Obviously wrong. That's it. Okay. So that's my point. My point is, you see what you're doing? Again, I remind you about Burak, yeah? You know it's Burak, yeah? yeah, yeah you know my country, Burak, you know it's Burak? What is it? Burak is like Samosa. <laughs> <laughs> In Turkey, Burak is a... That's it, man. <laughs> That's okay. Should I say Burak or not? <laughs> you guys are going to make me angry. So anyway, brother, what I would say to you, again, this is an emotional argument. And guess who? And guess the all known is perfect. Now, a woman that calls, uh, com commit adultery, and as a Muslim, she's not going to be in hellfire forever, by the way. And Allah can forgive her as well. So, as there will be some people that's eternal effort. Disbelievers. Do you know why? They choose to be inside the hellfire forever. So you should not blame Allah, you should blame them. I have atheist friends, as you can tell. So I'm yeah. Forgive we'll them that one, inshallah. But, but they are good people. Are you sure? You don't deserve burning reserve. Are you sure they're good? Of course they're good. So why are they not good to the one who gave them life and everything? Does that, does that define being good? Okay. If, uh, this example, I think you heard it before. If, I, if I'm very bad to my parents, I reject my parents, who took care of me all my life, clothed me, fed me, gave me water when I was thirsty. When I was in need of help, they, they helped me. When I grew up, I became healthy, wealthy. I turn away from them, I reject them, and I take care of my neighbors. I say, my neighbors, go away, man, my father, my brother, go away. I take care of my neighbors. Am I a good person? I don't what think you should think about that. Bro. No, 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 no. What, 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 are the, what, are the, what are the factors? It's the parents. They, 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 took, they took care of me all my life. They treat me well. They gave me everything. I turn away so from them. But I'm good to my neighbors, though. But you don't deserve infinite hellfire for that. No, you? no, before you go about infinite hellfire, because the action of this belief is so disgusting, it's so evil, should be in the hellfire forever, because they have arrogance. Because this person forever. is arrogant, yeah, forever. That's arrogance. So the question you ask yourself, tell your friend atheist, you know in the Quran, Allah gives you logical proofs, tangible proofs, why you should worship him alone, why are you rejecting it? Ask him. If he's gonna tell you, I just, I don't, I can't be bothered, he's arrogant. So you should not be blaming Allah. That's a question you should ask, Baba. No, no, I'm not saying you blame Allah. But generally speaking, we should not say to Allah, 
Oh Allah, when you put in this person in the hellfire, Lord said, oh this person, when you be in the hellfire forever. When you have paradise. Like Allah gave me, now I can choose to be kafir or Muslim. But I don't want to be in the hellfire forever. I want to be with, uh, in paradise. People don't have opportunity to become Muslim. If they don't have the Allah. Orthodox, Orthodox Jewish, I live in Stamford Hill. They can't talk to anybody else. They're grown from... Don't worry, brother. Allah is more just than you. In the Quran, Allah mentioned that. Allah will never punish people who Islam never came to them. So on the day of judgment, Allah will test so them. No, Allah will not punish them and Allah will test them, alhamdulillah. You know, more merciful, brother. You know, we know, I'm, you know, I'm not. We are not more merciful than Allah. We're not more just than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know, what is the biggest injustice? Biggest injustice when you associate partners with Allah. Do you know why? Associate what? Partners with Allah. Or you disbelieve in Allah. Do you know why? Because, you know, when you commit adultery, Allah can forgive you until you paradise. But disbelief and polytheism on the condition that you knew about Islam, yeah? Allah will never enter you to paradise. You know why? Because that action, they, you know, when you become a disbeliever, there's no any, when you worship someone beside Allah, when you worship desires, you don't get any, like, uh, you know, when you do zina, fornication, you get some uh, enjoyment, quick one, yeah? Or take an interest, yeah? But disbelief and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, shirk, uh, associated partners, you don't get no any enjoyment. That's what, second is what? You are belittling Allah. How? You say to Allah, you, you create this tremendous, powerful creation. But I deserve, I believe you don't deserve nothing. That's why it's the worst sin that you can commit when you belittle Allah. The one who commits adultery, or a Muslim that falls into LGBTQ mistakes or sins, as long as you believe it's haram, that one is not belittling Allah, it's from his desires, yes? But this believer is belittling Allah. So the atheist, he said to Allah, you don't deserve. You create everything, you gave me life, you don't deserve nothing from me. The example I will give you, brother, imagine, may Allah forbid, I think you heard it before, you're in the house, you wake up in the morning in your own house and there's a fire everywhere, and you're about to burn, and you try your best to serve yourself, but you couldn't, you gave up. And I came and saved your life, what would you say to me? I owe you my life. You owe me your life. Would you thank me all the time? Of course. But brother, I never gave you life. So why don't you think and Romamba gave you life for free? Of course, I you understand see? what you're That's saying. That's my point. My point here is that look how we, you say, I owe you my life. But I never gave you life, brother. You understand? But the one who gave you life, why are we speaking, brother? Yeah? We are benefiting from Allah's blessings. Yes? And Allah mentioned, Inna sabila. Inna wa inna kafura. We show him the correct path. Either he's grateful or ungrateful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know one of the mercy of Allah, as one of the scholars said, Abdul Rahman Nasser Saadi, may Allah have mercy upon him. Said, he said, one of the mercy of Allah, Allah told us in details about the punishment of the hellfire, to tell us stay away from it. So anyone doesn't want to stay away from it, except that he's arrogant, except the Muslim that fall into small sins that Allah can forgive him. For example, people like me, bro. Yeah. I, I want, I want, I don't want this life to just be the only one. I want infinite paradise. I want but I just, there are things that, for me, you might say your logic, that you're not, you're not smarter than anyone. You can't, not you, smart, can't huh? you can't be entitled to your own opinion. But when it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense fully for me. Like, but I'm saying certain things beyond our capacity. Like for example, what? In a hellfire forever? Hellfire forever. Yeah, but it's emotional um, arguments, so it's not, it's not. Will, before that, step by step, that, 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 that one you refute already, already because why? It's again, so you want to take to Allah, you should not create the hellfire forever. How long you should do it? Funny you said that. Yeah. I said to my friend, who's the, who's, the, who's the biggest, who's the worst person human in history? And they said, probably him. I said, It's Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh, who said he's queen. God. Yeah. But from the humans. He but killed Muslims and it's different from the Pharaoh, he killed the Israelites, is why he killed the Israelites. Why Hitler? Said, Hitler. Uh, me, for example, Hitler is a bad person. Yeah? No he doubt. Deserves, he deserves help, right? Yeah. I said to him, how many years? They said. First, they said infinite. I said, infinite? They said, maybe six billion years per person he killed. Six billion years. So that's 600 billion years of hope. And I said, that's funny because you're saying 600 billion years of hope. But for some people, not believing in God is eternal. Why? Because the one who doesn't believe in Allah, 
because if Hitler put his side, yeah, it's not gonna be in the hell forever because he killed people only. Because be not believing Allah, there's arrogance in you. Believe in Allah, yeah, it's arrogance. And that's a couple, nothing can clean it. That's what Allah, even Allah, do you know Allah mentioned the Quran? Even if we take them out again from the hellfire and bring them back to life, they will disbelieve again. What's that for? Eternity. So that's for eternity. They disbelief would be for eternity. Yeah. That's what for, forever. If you so, showed someone hellfire and put them back here, if he does, they won't come up. They'll be in Sajda for forever. No, they will. Okay, I'll tell you. Wait, wait. No, Jemma, Jemma, wait, wait. It's not logic. Shall I show it's not logic? I'm not coming after Shazda for uh, uh, life. Yeah, that's why you. I'm eating, drinking, going there. Yeah, okay, Iblis is, so, Iblis is so the greatest of Allah. How can we not believe? But I'm saying in a human logic. Human logic, okay. Do you know Peter Eric Atkins? Peter Atkins is a physicist, British physicist. He was asked in an interview. He's, he's an atheist. He said, e -e -e Peter, imagine you're walking and you see the stars. Writing down, Peter, believe in God. He said, I don't think it's magic. See, that's extreme. No, 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 but hold on a minute. He's a human being. And he's, he, he's considered to be a smart... Physicists are arrogant. No, no, wait. Ah, okay. That's why he's a half forever. Because, not because he's a physicist, because of what? Uh, that's arrogant. That's it, that's the point. That's what Allah said. Allah said in Surah Al-Zumar, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا قَالَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يُنْذِرُ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا قَالُوا بَلَى وَلَكِنْ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ الْعَذَابِ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ The shahid has the point of evidence. قِيلَ دُخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَبِئْسَ مَثْوَى الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ the, 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 the angels will be dragging these believers into the hellfire. The angels will say to them, did not Allah send your prophets and messengers? They say, yes, they did. Allah, then, when the angels put them in the hellfire, they said, what an evil destination, not for the good friends, not for the good people, for the arrogant people. Again, you know, to bring you back, you understand my brother? So those who are going to be in the hellfire, they are arrogant brother. They're in paradise. Also, you remember the question I asked you, okay, how long the hellfire should be? Five billion, six billion? Whatever, no, regardless, no, regardless. Okay, if someone says infinite and you say 100 billion, which one should we follow? Obviously, God, God. Khalas, Allah said it. Khalas, that's my point. But I'm saying from an emotional... But my brother... Logical... It's not logical, it's emotional. It's not logical because the logic dictates the one who gave them that time, he has a perfect knowledge. You remember what I said to you, brother? It's illogical, irrational that you and I, who has little knowledge, to dictate to the one who has a perfect knowledge what he should do. I agree. Khalas. I, I believe, I, I know. All, you are, all, all these doubts about the hellfire, free will, just this principle will lie with it, all the doubts. But that doesn't mean, you understand my point? A Christian can come now. He said, likewise, God become a baby, you cannot utilize your brain. No, 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 no. It's not the same. Do you know why? Because there's difference between what is known by necessity. Because, for example, if God become a baby, Define a baby is created, he's in need of help. That's already you are refuting for him to be God. Okay? So the Christians cannot utilize this argument. This argument we're talking about, certain things is beyond our understanding, but does not oppose our sound reasoning. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, man. And what I would say to you, brother, read, read the books, read the Quran, reflect upon it. You know, read what they call it, um, the ahadith about the hour. That's why I want to ask you the question, why Islam is the truth? And I'm giving you reminders how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, who couldn't read and write, he's coming with a perfect way of life. You know about the Islam came to preserve five things. Yes? Five No, five pillars. They call it Darul Riyat al khams the five universal necessities, which is Islam came to preserve religion, way of life, God. That's why atheism, polytheism, paganism is forbidden. Because the outcome of not worshiping the true Ilah, true God, you start following your desires. And we can see that in our societies. Secondly, Islam came to preserve the intellect. That's what alcohol and drugs forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage life. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why killing people unjustly and committing suicide is forbidden. These five things Islam came to preserve, if we do preserve them, we'll have good, good society. What is the opposite of that? We can see in our societies, alcohol, gambling, 
interest, destroying us. So, we, so the question you ask yourself, man that existed 1,400 years ago was able to come with a perfect way of life. On the other hand, we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world, Harvard, they cannot come with a perfect way of life. Because that man, he's a messenger of Allah. Make sense? Alhamdulillah, you know, Alhamdulillah. So, ask question, no problem. But like I said to you, brother, they, they, you know, sometimes, you see what's happened about LGBTQ, we we'll go back to it, yeah? And about adultery, uh, you know what you're doing sometimes? Not just you, my brother, all of us sometimes. There is, we centralize human being. Instead of centralizing Allah, we centralize human being. What do I mean by, what do I mean by that? And that, inshallah, will break down everything for you as well. When you centralize human being, if our starting point is human being, therefore, any legislation that punish, punish us, we look at it as a bad things. Because our starting point is, we are here to fulfill our desires. But if we centralize Allah, our starting, our starting point is Allah, therefore we're here to follow Allah's commandments, therefore the legislation that Allah came with will make sense. So one of the problems that Muslims have, they take Islamic legislation and they connect it to centralizing human beings and liberalism and secularism. Of course, we'll have a, there's, there will be contradiction because liberalism and secularism and atheism go against Islamic teaching. You understand, my brother? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Yeah, my brother, you thank you for uh, my pleasure to meet you, for coming ask questions. And this is, you're a good example, inshallah, that if you have a doubt, my dear brothers and my sisters, don't leave it. Because Satan, alhamdulillah, that sometimes Satan will tell you no one knows the answer. And if you go, no, no, this imam from, from Algeria, old man. Some of them really don't know. Though. Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. Some no, really no doubt. No doubt. Some don't know and they should not be speaking. That's why, my brother, not every imam should be giving dawah and not every teacher give dawah should be leading the prayer you understand one of the, the, the one of the things that i when i was young i used to think everyone has a long beard he's a scholar <laughs> well i i remember when i started debating with my friend that was 2005 and and he, he asked me a question and i said wait wait i said that man he, he must know he said to me brother doesn't mean because he has a long beard he knows <laughs> understand so, so doesn't mean because Imam, he has to, he knows how to give dawah, you understand? So Muslim has so to learn that. To I know little, wallahi, yakhi. There's more brothers who know more than me. They know better than me. But alhamdulillah, everything's clear? Everything's clear. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Thank you for the you want to take my number, inshallah, can text me, inshallah, yeah, sure, if you want. Sure, sure, sure. Inshallah. But I'll take time to, to respond, you know? No. I'll take time to, you know, okay, this. To me, okay, khalas, to you. Do you know why I stopped smoking? Because of this, <laughs> I said it's too much, man. Yes, yes, yes. Allah forgive us all. Let's go, Allah. Inshallah. I'm a khatir, or what? No, we're not harming. I'm just going to show you the story. Inshallah, Allah love you. It's so much. Aye, Allah, Allah love you. Come. Aye, this is my number, Baba. May Allah bless you, Aye. I see you, inshallah, man. Thank you, Allah. What's up, Aye, Burak? Please. Aye, Aye. I'm the number. I'm just going to show you. أنت موجود هنا بلندن؟ إيه نعم أنا في لندن. أنا تخابرك يوم ليام حتى بس أزو أشوفك لأن أنا عايش بالنرويج مو هنا. النرويج ما شاء الله من أي بلد سوري أو تليبي؟ الأحواز ما شاء 